Hello everybody, I'm Carl Schuf, Geek Ambassador at GreenSock. Today I'm going to quickly illustrate how the GreenSock animation platform, GSAP for short, can radically transform your JavaScript animation workflow. Here we have a pretty cool animation sequence of nine elements controlled by only five lines of code. You'll notice that each element animates in direct sequence. It's a cool effect, especially considering how little code there is, but it's a bit mechanical. When it comes to animation, timing is everything. Professional animators need precise control over every aspect of their animation. Let's explore the code a bit. This example uses GSAP's TweenLight and TweenMax tools, which are great for basic animation needs, but they really aren't intended for sequencing more than two or three animations. The timing here is all controlled by delays. Each tween has a hard-coded delay, which represents the amount of time of all the previous tween's durations. You could take an animation written in this fashion and make some minor tweaks, but you'll quickly find that it isn't flexible. For instance, let's say I want the feature image to start animating one second after the headlines animate in. So we have our heading one and heading two elements animating in, and then we have the feature image, which is this guy right here. We'll run, and you'll see his tween is that little scale and fade. So what I would do is I would maybe change his delay to be two seconds. All right, let's give that a shot. I run it. Oops, these guys here didn't get the memo. They're not waiting for this tween to end before they begin. If I change any of the delays in the animation, I then have to go through all the following tweens and change their delays as well. If I have a dozen or 50 tweens, that's gonna be a real headache. So that's not a good solution right there. You know, other things can happen. The client could say, oh, I want the first two animations to take two seconds. Well, that's an easy change. Well, part of it. But now you'll see that the rest of the timeline basically finishes before those tweens even finish. That's no good. And even worse things can happen. The client could say, oh, I want this last tween where all these images stagger in to be the first thing that happens. Well, if I remove the delay from the last tween, that has no effect on all the other animations. They're not waiting. And in the professional animator's workflow, these types of changes come up all the time. What if you need to make the entire animation just a little bit slower? Well, you have to change every duration and every delay. And chances are your animation is going to be more than just five or six tweens. Another issue that all animators deal with is suppose your animation is 10 or 20 seconds long and you want to just finesse that final second. Do you want to sit through 10 or 20 seconds of animation just to wait to see how your latest change looks? That would be ridiculous. GSAP allows you to have total control over every aspect of your animation. I'm going to show you how GSAP's Timeline Light can take an animation like this and give you all the flexibility and control that you could ever need. Think of a Timeline Light as a container for multiple tweens. Tweens can be added at any precise location, relative to other tweens, or even at labels. Once the timeline is constructed, you have total control over the playback. Play, pause, reverse it, adjust the speed, and a whole lot more. Let's see how we can convert this animation to a Timeline Light animation. The first thing I'm going to do is get rid of all these delays, because we don't need them anymore when we're using Timeline Light. Do that very quickly, and now just run, and you'll see that every animation happens at exactly the same time. Cool. Now I'm going to create my Timeline Light by just using var tl, that'll be the name of my timeline to keep it short, equals new timeline light. Okay, and now I need to get these tweens inside of that timeline light. So I'm gonna start by saying tl.from. From is a convenience method of timeline light that inserts a tween light tween with an abbreviated syntax. I'm gonna get rid of all of these semicolons because I'm literally going to be chaining all of these animations together inside of my timeline. I'm gonna get rid of tween light here and do the same thing for all the subsequent tweens. So literally what I have here is one line of code. It's broken onto many lines for readability. So my timeline now contains multiple tweens. If I test right now, watch what happens. Every tween runs in direct sequence. There's no delays, none of that. If I take my first tween and make its duration three seconds long, watch this. Yeah, it takes a long time, but all the other animations naturally flow directly behind it. So I don't have to manage delays every time I change the duration of one tween. Awesome. I'll set that back to 0 0.5. And now 
let's do something else that's kind of common. Maybe I want the heading one and heading two tweens to overlap a little bit. I don't want the first tween to end before the second one starts. So I'm going to add a position parameter to the second from method. And after I have the tween vars, I'm gonna add a comma and add another parameter which is called the position parameter. And I can use a relative value. So I'm gonna pass in a string and say minus equals 0 0.25. And what that means is that this tween will start 0.25 seconds before this tween here ends. So now you'll see that I have a little bit of overlap happening there in the first and second tweens. Maybe when the feature and description come in, I want them both to start at the same time. So you'll see that this guy here scales up and then the description text comes in. Well, what I could do is I could add a negative offset to the description tween that's the same duration as the previous tween, but then we get into a problem where if I change the duration of this tween, then I have to change the offset of the next tween. So the position parameter can also be a label. I'm gonna say, let's make it, call it um, feature, okay? So timeline light is automatically gonna add the feature label at the point that this tween is inserted. And then the next tween I'm also going to say is going to be at the feature label. So when I run now, you'll see that both of those tweens happen at exactly the same exact time. What's great about these labels is that they can also be relative. I can say, you know what, let's start the description tween at the feature label, but let's add just a touch more time. So I could say plus equals 0.25. I'm gonna run. So it comes in just a little bit later. I could change the duration of this tween however I want. I can make it three seconds long, but that description tween is always gonna start 0.25 seconds after it begins, and then those staggers follow. That's a little bit ridiculous, so I'll undo it. The position property can also be an absolute value. So I'm going to take the heading two. Remember that one came in 0.25 seconds before the H1 tween ended. Well, if I just put the number zero in there, no quotes, it's not a string, that means it's gonna happen at a duration of, or I'm sorry, a time of zero in this timeline. And now you have both those tweens starting at the same time. Previously, I mentioned that the old way of doing this wouldn't allow me to jump to the end of the timeline to maybe tweak the last bit of animation. Well, watch how easy this is with timeline light. I'm going to say that this last tween is also going to be added at a label of stagger. Now that that stagger label is in there, you're never gonna believe this. I'm going to put a semicolon on that chain of tweens, and I'm just going to say tl.seek, and I'm going to say stagger. Now watch this, as soon as I run the animation, I'm seeing just that last tween. I can say, you know what? I wanna add maybe a little bit of rotation in there and I'll say minus 180. Hit run and then now I can instantly see how that change works. I don't think there's any other tool set on the planet that's gonna give you this type of flexibility. In the previous demo I mentioned, oftentimes you might wanna just change the speed of the entire animation. Well, with timeline light, it's very easy. What I'm going to do is this. I'm just gonna say that my timelines time scale is going to be four. We'll make this really obvious. And now you can see it plays super fast. All right, if I make this a number less than one, it's going to play slower. I could say 0 0.5. So it's gonna play at half its normal speed. And there you go. You can totally see exactly what's happening in every animation. Very easy to change. So I could have 40 lines of code in here and I can do a global time scale change. What's interesting is that I can also tween the time scale, which I'll show you in the future, which means I can accelerate the speed and decelerate it while the timeline is playing. It's an amazing feature. Another thing I mentioned was, what if I wanted the last tween to now be the first tween? Well, it's as easy as this. I can just select that last tween. I don't want that semicolon. I'll cut it out. 
and I'm going to go up to the first line here. We'll pop that buddy down there, paste this one in. So now, this will be the first tween that happens because it's the first tween in the timeline, and it will normally push all the other tweens out of the way. Except for this second one. Remember, I gave it an absolute position of zero? Watch what happens. You'll see that the heading two and the stagger now play at the same time. So for something like that, I would just remove that zero, and now you'll see that all the tweens, again, will play after that stagger completely finishes. Again, if I want the headings to overlap, no big deal. I just take the second heading tween for the H2 element, and I'm going to give it a negative relative offset of 0 0.25, and now you'll see that there's a little bit of overlap when that those two tweens start. So I really like the stagger from being the last thing in the animation, so let me just put that back where it should be. Putting that semicolon, and let's move this guy up. So now that we have an animation built and we've seen just a little bit of the flexibility, we're gonna show you really quickly how we can control this animation. I just made a few quick adjustments to this file. Weren't you paying attention? Um, and you'll see now that there's a little bit of navigation built in. It allows me to restart the timeline. I can reverse the timeline. I can pause the timeline. I can resume in the current direction, which is reverse right now. Or I can play the timeline from the beginning, reverse, pause, play goes forward and of course the slider allows me to adjust the progress of the timeline too so how do I do all this magic well it's really quite simple for the basic button controls like play pause reverse resume and restart well there's a play button there and it calls tl.play to pause tl.pause to reverse timeline reverse resume tons of methods that make it very easy to control any timeline you can read more about these in the docs. As far as the slider is controlled, well, the slider adjusts the progress value of the timeline. And I'm just using a jQuery UI slider. Uh, it's all fairly standard implementation here. And basically, whenever I slide the slider, I'm telling the progress to be set to a value. The value of the progress is a value between 0 and 1. So I just need to divide the progresses, I'm sorry, the slider's value by 100. And there's a little bit of magic built into the timeline now where I'm calling an on update callback, which means that every time the timeline updates, it's going to be calling a function for me. And that update callback just tells the slider to adjust where the slider handle is. So every time I play, this slider handle is actually giving me the actual progress of the animation as a whole. So folks, hopefully you're starting to see just how the Greensock animation platform can totally revolutionize your animation workflow. Visit greensock.com for more info and follow us on Twitter and Facebook to stay up to date with all that's going on.